Welcome back and thank you for watching my video. Today we're going to go over AOD and 4R70W pumps. I'm going to show you how I build them after 30 years of building transmissions. And then I'm going to show you a clip from a training video. It's the kind of videos and books we didn't have YouTube, so we had to pay for books and videos. And this is a clip from one of those videos from back in the day. And I'd like for you to put in the comments what you can see, the differences between how I build pumps now and the way we were taught in these old videos back in the day. Insanely cool cars, tool reviews, and auto repair videos. Now I want to start by showing you a couple of differences between AOD and 4R70W pumps. This way you can apply the knowledge of what I'm going to show you on a 4R70W pump build to either one of these pumps. Number one, we've got an AOD pump, it's a cast iron, front pump half, and an aluminum 4R70W pump. Now, there's going to be some overlap between AODE and 4R75W. I'm just going to say AOD, I'm going to say 4R70W. Of course, they're both going to have this piston here with the piston retainer. The piston retainer is easily popped loose at this tab. One, two, three tabs. You pop that up. Don't bend it back. Just pop it up enough to release to get it out of there. Pull the piston out of there. You replace the seals on the piston and put it back in there. Just like any other piston and seal on the AOD or 4R70W, you're going to want to use the seal installer. I'm going to show you that. Seal installer set looks like this. This is the one for the back of the pump. You want to use these. I mean, you're going to have to have the one for the, the third gear drum anyway. So you might as well buy the whole set and use the tool at every step of the way instead of taking a chance on using a you know, handheld universal seal installer and possibly nicking a seal. They come in a set anyway. You have to have this one for the third gear. So you might as well get the whole set and use them. If there's something that I'm using or working on that you can't find a link to, let me know in the comments and I'll try to find a link and put it in the description of the video so it's easier for you to find whatever I'm using. Okay, the next thing is these stators. Uh, there's always a stator. I'm assuming you know how to take five bolts out. There's always a stator bolted to the back of the pump. And the stator for the 4R70Ws is you're going to be able to tell the difference between it and the AOD. See there? Yeah, that's an AOD. Because right here, you have a bushing near the top here on the AOD, and that bushing is not there on the 4R70W. But the bushing that's way down in there is way down in both of them. Now, speaking of the bushing that's way down in both of them, make sure you check that bushing and you check where the sealing rings ride right in here. Because the 4R70W has sealing rings on the shaft on the forward drum. They go down in here and those sealing rings ride inside here. It's fine if you see two history marks for two sealing rings down inside the stator here. But if you see uh, where either one of those history marks is, a little nick on either side of them and it won't it don't, won't usually be all the way around it'll be like one little spot over here or one little spot over here where you've got on either side of the history mark a little scrape mark where the shaft itself has actually touched the inside of the stator once that's happened the stator is no good anymore how to prevent that is you check the bushing in here and if the bushing has anywhere at all then you replace the bushing down in here because the bushing is what keeps that input shaft from touching inside the stator and ruining the stator. You need to also inspect the stator on either side of every one of these four rings if any of these all the way around because if any of this metal right here on either side of the ring has been touched or scrubbed then it's rubbed on that drum and the corresponding drum is bad, the stator is bad, and the stator has to be thrown away. Now as you flip this over we're getting into the pump gears the pump gears ride right here. And this one looks fine. Get over here in the light. This one looks fine. Let me find one that has damage there. And see what I'm looking Oh, right here. So what I'm looking for here is you can clearly see where the pump gears have been riding. 
And right here, it's very visible. And you can actually feel that with your fingernail. You can catch your fingernail on that. And that is ruined. That, that stator is no good. Another thing to look for on these stators is do the old rings still turn fairly well? And right there, you can see that one's kind of stuck. And yep, yep, look, there's a little bit of dirt right there. Well, that one must have been dropped on the ground. It must have dropped on the ground and pinched it right there. I'll show you a more severe one. This one right here, I marked it a while back because there's a slight crack right here where it had been thrown in with some other parts. Maybe another part came down on top of it, hit it right on the edge. It broke the ring right there and the ring doesn't want to spin around and turn. This one turns fine, that one turns fine, but this one's pinched in right here where it's damaged. So many different ways these stators can be bad and you need to look out for that. They also have a bushing here in the front. The bushings can be replaced. These other things that I've been showing you on the stators, you, you can't fix that. You just have to change the stator. All right, now let's get to the pump body itself. This one's pretty obvious with this AOD pump that the, the bushing is, is, is gone. I mean, just completely gone. It's missing. You see, it came out the front here, tore up the seal on its way out. And if a bushing has been spun like that in the pump body, it's actually been able to leave the pump body. And you've got to assume that there's some wear right here where the pushing, bushing goes. And you're not gonna be able to trust that to hold a new bushing nice and tight. So this pump body is trash. We're not gonna use it. The seal on these AOD pumps is just a regular seal. But on the 4R70W, take your seal puller. And if you don't have a seal puller, you can go in from this side and get behind here with a nice wide flat blade screwdriver that's dull on the tip. The, the, the more wore out and dull it is on the tip, the better. You get down in there, be very careful if you're using that method because you don't want to scratch any part of the pump. But if you've got an actual seal puller, try to get in there and get down and pull that up. And then take a look at what's unique about this, this pump seal here. This has kind of a lip right here at the bottom, rubber lip sticking out, the bottom of this seal. And this is quite ingenious by Ford. Now they have cut in here to where they have a, a lip facing this way so that when the seal tries to come up out of there, this rubber catches on the inside of here and, and prevents it from being able to pull out. And this enables you to more easily pull this out, but it's almost impossible for fluid pressure to pop that out. But with, you know, um, concentrated force on one spot, you can get it out pretty easily. And you can put these seals in with thumb pressure. Look at that. Like I said, concentrated force on one spot. They come right out. Makes it so much easier to service and so much less likely to have a seal pop out and leak that you've got an inletted exhaust down here at the bottom. This is the bottom part of the pump. Your top bolt hole is going to be up here. And this is significant because when you put the new bushing back in, you want to line up this groove right here. And this groove is significant and important because it needs to be at the bottom to allow fluid that is sitting here when you first start up the engine or when it's running, the fluid goes into that groove and gets spread all around the bushing and lubricates the bushing very well. If you're not paying attention to that groove and that groove ends up being here or here or here, it's not necessarily going to get the amount of transmission fluid that it needs to last a good long while. And God forbid you spin this around and put the bushing in backwards to where the opening into the groove is in the front and now the fluid can't get in there between the bushing and the hub of the converter at all. And so now you've got no lubrication between the converter hub and the bushing. That's not going to last very long. Go by that oil groove because different manufacturers that make these bushings sometimes put the divot in different places. And what you're really needing to do is get that oil groove in just the right place and oriented in just the right direction. And to heck with the, the divots. The next thing I like to check is the face of the pump right here. I'm checking for the same wear as I was checking on the stator here. And then we want to check all along in here. And let me show you why. 
found one that uh, let's see here. All right, here's what we're looking for. Let me orient this right. There's the top bolt hole. Here's the inlet and outlet. And take these gears right here and move them back. Oh, look at all that room. That's one of the one of the things you're looking for. Looking for slop there. Now pull that out and see why it's doing that. Put the inner gear out. And while I've got my hand on the inner gear, before I forget to tell you. Let me show you something on this. Very flat on the back side, the side that faces the stator is very flat. And if you turn this over, the side that faces the torque converter has a bevel right here and it has an obvious notch and relief right here between the gear and the torque converter. So this faces toward the engine or toward the torque converter. This side faces toward the stator or the rest of the transmission. All right, the slot we're seeing is between this outer gear. The slot we're seeing is between this outer gear and the pump body itself. And if you pull that gear out and you look right here, you'll see there is wear right here. You can feel it with your fingernail. There's wear on the outer diameter of the gear. And down here, it usually starts in the bottom somewhere. And I'm not sure why I think maybe the, the weight of the torque converter pushing down. Um, but if you look right here, let me get the camera over here real close so you can see. It looks pretty fine. It looks pretty fine until you get about right here. And then you start seeing these scratches right here. Not so bad, but they get worse and worse and worse. And then they're really bad right here. I mean, you can see it catching on them. And hear it and it's just it continues to be bad till about right here so about from here all the way around to about right here which is about 50 percent of the area and let me show you another one that's not quite as bad one this one is obviously not savable because it's got too much damage on the pump body and these gears both this body and these gears are bad not rebuildable this one however I don't know if you noticed. Oh, you noticed, but again, that oil groove is down here at the bottom. Where the inlet and outlet is, the top bolt is up here, the oil inlet groove is here, and the opening for the oil inlet groove is right there on where the fluid from inside the pump can get in there. Same thing with this one. The bushing is in there correctly, but we have some damage on the outer edge here, and it looks great along in here. Let's see, pretty sure. No, nope, no, it wasn't this one. Let's see, where was the one? There was another one here that had some damage. Ah, it's this one right here. Okay. We're seeing it smooth all the way around, all the way around, all the way around until you're right here in the very bottom. Actually, it's right there. Kind of lined up with this part of the pump right here. It's right there. And you can't really catch, you can't catch your nail on it. You, it's This isn't bumping around when I try to run the edge on it. It's, it's almost smooth, but you can see it. You can see say you can see it let me make sure you can see it can you see it right there it's just starting to scratch up a little bit right there now this if there's nothing else wrong with this housing this can be saved if I didn't have so many of them that were better you know you could in a pinch rub some scotch Brite on that to make sure there's no high spots and put a brand new set of gears in here but you still can't reuse these gears because look at the look at the gears look at the state of the gears the outer edge of these gears took most of the damage. And if you were to put these gears back in any one of these pumps, they would continue to chew up that pump. At this point, there's a little bit of damage right there and a lot of damage on the pump gears. So these need to go in the garbage. 
a brand new set of pump gears in here. Scotch brought that so that that doesn't ruin the new pump gears and you could have a decent pump out of those. Of course, if you've got a lot of pumps like I do, pick one that has no damage. Double check the bottom right there. Yep, no damage at all. Change this bushing out. Do not use a screwdriver and get on here and start banging it out with a screwdriver or something. If you're gonna be building pumps or building transmissions, you're gonna need a good set of bushing drivers anyway because you're gonna be replacing bushings. So just take the plunge and buy a big set of bushing drivers. Use the correct size bushing driver to get your pump bushing out. And don't use a hammer. There's no sense in hammering on bushings. Hammering on bushings mushrooms the edge of the bushings. Now I know this is an old bad bushing that's gonna get thrown away, but it's just a good habit to treat all bushings the same way and I do have a big 25 ton press over there but it's so slow to use the 25 ton press so instead I have a nice big arbor press arbor presses are incredibly fast compared to the big 25 ton press and just push that right out of there And this is just an old junk piece of an old bearing that I use as a spacer. And an old piece of gear with the space between the pump and here. And there's the bushing. Now they're just as sweet as pie. And you'll notice that using the arbor press like that, there's no gouges at all. No gouges at all that have to be cleaned up. You don't have to take a whiz wheel or sandpaper or anything and clean up your gouges in here because there aren't any. There's a few little scratches where the bushing came out and you could just hit that with some scotch brite. And before you hit that with some scotch brite, there is one thing I want to say. There's a slight camphor on this side right here. So if you're scotch brighting, put your scotch brite in from this side and go back and forth around here because on the front side, uh, I'm going to show you this for two reasons. If you reach in here with scotch brite on this side and you're going along and, and this snags your scotch brite, pulls it out from under, and then slice, this could cut you to the bone right here. Ask me how I know. For the same reason, when you're putting your bushing in, you want to put your bushing in from this side because you've got this little camphor that's going to make it easier for you. If you try to put your bushing in from the front, then it could catch the edge of the bushing here and it's going to be scratching that edge of the outside of the bushing as it goes down in there could roll up some metal in there in between in between the bushing itself and the housing and that could push your bushing out make it pooch out a little bit You'll, not enough to where you could ever see it but enough to make it it makes a tight spot between the bushing and the converter hub Now, you can really see if any of those scratches were deep, like right here. And that's about it. So we can just give a little bit more extra work on that spot. The scratches themselves are not a problem because the scratch goes down into the metal. It's on either side of each scratch. If you look at a scratch with a magnifying glass, Either side of each scratch has a raised edge that sticks up on top of the surface. And that would be between the pump body and the bushing, pushing the bushing toward the hub. Tiny bit of Loctite. I want to smear that around the front edge. Of the front edge, I mean the edge that points toward the torque converter because that's what's going to go in first remember we've got this camfered edge right here and we've got this div but more importantly we have this groove for the oil right here the transmission fluid to get in there I want that to face up and then right there get the bushing driver in there 
it all nice and straight, ready to go. Put our little spacer right there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start without the spacer so I can get more surface area touching the bushing. Bring this down, center the whole thing. And one of the beauties of having an arbor press is that not only are you not hammering this thing with a hammer and possibly mushrooming it, but you see how that actually works with you to flatten everything out and keep everything nice and straight and even as you push the stuff down in there. There, now it's, it's countersunk a little bit. We're going to move this out of the way and take a look at it. It's not down in there far enough. I can see already. And it's almost, look how close it is to the edge. It's almost. Let's see, I'm gonna go get another bushing driver to, that'll fit right in here to make sure that we don't push it too far. Okay, the outer edge of this bushing driver fits right in this relief here. And I'm going to use it to prevent the bushing from coming too far out this way. And then around, I have a pocket surface. This one back in there. Oh, did you see that move just a little bit? And I could feel it hit that other bushing driver and stop. Now we've got just a little bit below the surface there. We know that the gear is not going to touch the bushing. And it's perfectly lined up with the outside edge here because this stopped it from going too far. Here's a beat up old flathead screwdriver I use for staking. You see, can you see how that looks now that it's staked? And what I do is take a pocket knife and scratch right there and toward the stake right there to make sure that we don't have anything sticking up a little bit that could scratch a spot on the converter hub. And then just to be sure, take that scotch brite and do that little spot with the scotch brite as well. Feel of it? Yep, nice and smooth. I take the brand new seal. And inside the brand new seal, shoot your finger up through and to the back and pull down into it assembly lube or Petroleum jelly, Vaseline. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting it down there on that garter spring. Notice I'm being very careful not to get it on this outer edge. I want that to be nice and dry. I want something in here to hold that garter spring in place. And also right here where the converter hub is gonna be, I want that nice and lubricated so that when the converter hub goes in there, it's got some lube. And when it first spins, it's got some lube and it doesn't ruin the seal. But don't put any kind of lubrication at all on the outer edge. As a matter of fact, we're going to double check one more time to make sure that outer edge is nice and dry. And then remember what I said about this seal right here? You can push it in with your thumbs. Now, if you're doing an AOD pump and you cannot just shove it in there with your thumbs, Make sure you get your big bushing driver that's big enough to cover the whole seal. And let me just show you on this one. because I could push that in with my thumbs, but you're not going to see. So if we were doing an AOD pump and you couldn't just shove it in there with your thumbs like you can this 4R70W, this is what it would look like. You put the oversized bushing driver in there. Bring your arbor press down and just shove it right in there with the arbor press. Up over and I use the trans gel assembly lube I like this blue or purple stuff whatever it is it's blue or purple I'm colorblind so I can can tell the difference between blue and purple but I can tell the difference between this blue stuff and red and so if 
some of this stuff melts off of one of my seals. Like say, say I've got it all over the front pump seal like this and I see a fluid coming down in the bell housing and it's blue, then I know it's just my assembly lube. If I use the red trans gel, I won't know if it's transmission fluid or trans gel. Let's get some on that bushing right there. Make sure the bushing's lubed up good. Get some on the where the gear rides on the front. You don't have to go all the way around because the gear's gonna pick it up and move it around. Get some right here where the gear's gonna ride. We take you don't have to put new gears in one that's in as good a shape as this is. You know, it's it's just extra insurance. That's the front. Remember how we determined the front goes to the uh, torque converter? It's got this relief right here, and it's got a beveled edge right here. That goes to the front or the torque converter. And then it's all very flat back here on the back. So that goes to the stator and the transmission. Down in there. There we go. Good to go. Now what you got to do is put your stator on there, bolt it down. Make, double check, make sure everything's clean again. Just double check because I can see this like a little tiny bit of something right there. Maybe right there. Double check, make everything's, sure everything's clean before you put your stator in there. Put your stator in there, put your uh, piston with the new seals on it. And don't forget to put this seal here. Oh, and these bolt holes are not evenly spaced, so it's dummy proof. The, if you try to put the stator in there wrong, then you won't be able to get all the bolts in it. Now I'm gonna insert this clip from this old training video. And I'm not sure how old it is, but what I want you to do is comment below the differences that you can see from the methods in the training video and the methods that I use today after, well, I started working on transmissions in the early 90s, so it's been, what, 30 years? So this training video could be like 15 years old. It could be 25 years old. I don't remember. I don't know how old it is. Get a loosely pump along with the old intermediate piston lift here. Set the plastic thrust washer aside. Remove the stator support and pull by bolt. Lift the stator support up, out, and set it aside. Lift out the inner and outer pull bolt. Note that one side of the inner rotor, which turns against the stator support, is completely flat across its surface, while the other side, which faces the front of the pump, has a chamfer carrier to help guide the cold converter hub in. Set them down as removed together. Remove the front seal attached. With the pump apart, it's easy to force the seal out from behind. Use a medium screwdriver, put the tip inside the lip, and knock it out with a hammer. This metal plate for seal is held in place in the pump in a very unique way. There is a slightly raised rib here, when installed into this board, is grappled and retained by sharp barbed recess area here. Interestingly, you only need pump pressure to install it. I'll show you in a minute, but let's look at the pull version first. The pull converter hub is supported by these bushes. This one is very smooth, shiny, and looks like new. There is no unusual wear, such as gouging, deep grooving, or evidence of off center side wear. If the bushing in your pump looks this healthy, leave it as is. If yours has signs of wear or you are unsure of its condition, replace it with a new one. Even though this bushing is in excellent shape, I'll show you how to replace it. Use a large screwdriver and hammer to drive it out, but before you do, take notice of how it is positioned. This bushing has two notches which should be oriented a certain way. Use a pump marker to indicate where the notches should go. Also note that the notches are closer together on the left side when viewed this way. Let's take it to another work area so we won't disturb these pumps. Now drive the old bushing out. Use light blows to minimize damage to it. Turn the body over. Get the new bushing. Only to solve the new bushing from the front seal side. Align the notches with the pinwash. Use an engine valve, vision valve, or even a large socket and drive it in. Install completely, it should be flush with this lid. The bushing should be stayed here. In here. I'm going to the screwdriver. The tip is cut down to one of the little white.
Take a foot body to your foot converter and test fit it. Set it onto the converter hub. Make sure it turns free. If it is too tight, knock down high spots on the bushing by tapping with a hammer and wood. Never direct the hammer to stop moving with a steel tool. Installation of the pump sealer's neck. The foot onto the seal and hook. Push it in with your thumb. To make sure it is completely seated, I like to tap it a couple times with my hand. Turn the body over. Push the body into the bottom Apply fluid to the outer rotor and place it in. Pass on to the inner rotor. Make sure that you install it with the chamfered side down into the cavity facing the foot seal and center it with the bushing. Now set the center support into the bottom. Are you still watching this? That is insane. You are super awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you subscribe right now, I'll show you one of the biggest rats in the world. If you like this video, we've got a whole lot more. We've got tool reviews, we've got repair videos, we've got show car videos, hot rods, mod rods, you name it. If it's got wheels on it and an engine, it's probably on this channel. So subscribe, like, and binge watch Saint Auto. Binge watch Saint Auto.